Judge McAfee gave an interview to a radio station. It's so fascinating when judges do this. Like last week, you know, a couple days ago. And um, he was talking about, thanks, babe. Duggar's bringing me a glass of water. Um, So he was talking about this case and whether he's going to possibly change his decision now that he has a primary challenger. This is a heavily Democratic district, won 73% for Joe Biden. you know, Fannie Willis was elected as DA in the same thing, place where he's now going to have to run for re-election because he looked like he was unopposed, but now he is opposed. And so he sat down and gave an interview. Um, and I'm trying to get the name of the uh, the radio host that he gave it to. I'll play it in a second. But take a listen to him. Oh, Shelly Winter saying um, he is not, do not fear. He will not be changing his opinion based on the new challenger. Watch. I've had a rough draft and an outline before I ever heard a rumor that someone wanted to run for this position. So the result is not going to change because of politics. I am calling it as best I can in the law as I, as I understand it. Ooh, so that's interesting, Mike, that he had a rough draft already and he's reassuring everybody that the new challenger was considerably to the left and he's more on the right, um, is not going to make him change anything. Do you believe it? No, I don't. I'm very concerned about the politics here. Uh, I think that this is a young Kemp judge. He is in a very Democrat uh, 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 area in Fulton County. And the fact that he said he was going to wait two weeks to make his decision during that two weeks was the filing deadline to figure out whether he was going to get a challenger. And sure as hell, he got a Democrat Challenger. So uh, I do think the politics are at play here. And exhibit A of the politics being at play is he's on a radio show announcing uh, that his uh, what what his decision is going to be and how it's not going to change. Hmm. What can we glean? This is from an article in the New York Times, Dave, reporting on this interview he gave, and but we pulled the clips. What can we glean from the following answer where he's talking about his children? As Mike point out, points out, he's only thirty four young man. He's younger than all of us. I mean, he's a babe, but he's doing a good job. Um, so listen to what he says about his children. You know, I've got two kids, five and three. They're too young to have any idea of what's going on or what I do. Uh, but what I'm looking forward to one day is maybe they will grow up a little bit and they ask me about it. And I'm looking forward to looking them in the eye and telling them I played it straight and I did the best I could. I like that. What do you, what do you take away from those two sound bites? I like it too, Megan. I I read the article, saw the interview, and look, I take him at his word. And it is funny that I'm the one defending the Federalist Society judge, whereas Mike doesn't have much faith in him. I think he's true. I I, I like what he's done. And and people on my side of the aisle have been critical of him saying he's allowed this to become a circus, but I don't blame him for that. Remember, it was Nathan Wade who submitted the sworn affidavit saying that the relationship didn't begin until afterwards and I got repaid half. And because they did that, that made the issue of lying important. And that's why he had to do all these interviews and uh, hearings. And so I think he has done well. He's got a lot of gravitas, even though he's only 34 years old, too young to be president himself, mind you. But that's the one benefit of a receding hairline. He just looks a lot more serious. (laughs) It's true. It does show his lack of vanity because you don't really have to have a receding hairline like that at age 34 in in modern day America. 34 years old, went to Emory, led the college Republicans, an accomplished cellist, went to University of Georgia Law School, was in the Federalist Society, clerked or interned for two conservative judges on the Georgia Supreme Court. But also... There's this line item, you know, he gave 150 bucks to Fannie. We, we talked about that. So did Dave. Like, I don't, it wasn't that big a deal, but he worked for Fannie Willis, Mike. He worked for her because he eventually spent some time in the DA's office and Fannie was above him on the totem pole, not in her current stint as the DA, but when she was, you know, more senior to him as an up and coming DA. So it's interesting when she was on the stand, she said something like, um, and he worked with a body, the terrible lawyer sorry, a body who did that uh, hearing the other day. And she said something like, you know, when, when you two work for me, a body and you judge McAfee in the day's office. And I don't know how that power structure uh, may or may not play in his deference toward her, his, you know, coming up under her. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, my, he couldn't even look at her when he was trying to get, tell her to cool her jets and to be uh, an adult and be a, a lawyer and respect 
the court and respect respect the process. Also, this judge was an appointee under Governor Kemp. He was the Georgia Inspector General for a couple of years before Governor Kemp appointed him as a judge. And as everyone knows, Kemp and his people are not exactly fans of President Trump. No, no, they're Republicans, but they are not MAGA Republicans. And you know, Trump's gone after Kemp pretty hard over these past few years. Financial experts thought we were in the clear. They were anticipating around six rate cuts by the Fed this year, and then the inflation data came out higher than expected. This isn't going away anytime soon. How could it? The U.S. is $34 trillion in the hole, and yet we keep just printing money, which pushes the prices you pay every day even higher. So you can either bury your head in the sand or you can do something about it. One option to consider is to diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold can be your hedge against inflation. And Birch Gold makes it easy to own. They will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. And you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text MEGAN to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Then talk to a precious metals specialist about how you can choose to protect your savings from persistent inflation with gold. Just text my name, M-E-G-Y-N, to 989898 right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.